Good Monday morning. I want to thank you for um, adjusting to our uh, interlude we threw in to you last week. I had a really bad cold, and you might still hear the remnants of it, and I didn't want you to have to suffer through that, and I couldn't have suffered through it. So, um, But today, we're about to embark on one of my favorite stories in all of Scripture, and that is the life of Joseph. But if I may, I actually had a friend tell me one time that every time she would read a novel, she would read the last page first, which number one is a writer of fiction and number two is an avid reader of fiction that horrified me. I thought, what? That's the best part. Why in the world would you read the end at the beginning? And then you know everything that's going to happen. And so it just kind of wrecked me a little bit. But I am going to do something with you that I've never done before. But I feel like to have this revelation of truth before we start Joseph's story is going to be just a really powerful gift to us as we kind of walk through his journey and we think of our own. Joseph went through things in his story that were heartbreaking, probably next to Job and and stories of the prophets and the disciples and apostles. Uh, Joseph's story is a hard one to hear. But the beautiful thing about Joseph's story is what he reveals at the end of his story. And I want to actually start in the New Testament, if I can, at the passage that many of us can quote by heart, Romans 8.28. But I'm actually going to read for us Romans 8.28 and 8.29 so that we can just take this in in the fuller context of Scripture. I'm reading from the Amplified Version because I just love how it gives us all of the the real words of, of the Greek and the Hebrew here. But it says this, it says, we are assured and know. Okay, so it it starts right off with the confidence that you and I as believers can have in the God that we serve. That's the beautiful thing about being a follower of Christ. In a world of uncertainty, like we live in right now, in a world that has been pummeled by hurricanes, shaken by earthquakes, threatened with nuclear war, there are still things in the life of a believer and follower of Jesus Christ that we can be assured of and that we can know. And that is a gift. That is probably the greatest gift of being a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ is we don't have to live in uncertainty. The rest of the world can be shaking at its core, but you and I have things in our lives that can't be shaken. And one is is our God. So we are assured and we know that God, being a partner in their labor or in our labor, that all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to those who love God and are called according to his design and his purpose for whom he foreknew. And this goes on into 29 because a lot of times we stop with verse 28 and we're like, God works all things together for good. Some of us just stop there, but there's more to that. God works all things together for good to those who know him and love him. That means those who are in relationship with him. But then it goes further. For those whom he foreknew, of whom he was aware and loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning to be molded into the image of his son and to share inwardly his likeness. So of all the things that we go through in our lives, the goal and the desire of the heart of our heavenly father is that it will mold us into the image of Jesus Christ. So I want you to think about this in your own life, in the situations that you're walking through as a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, that you can be confident that God is working those things for good, but ultimately what he's after is you becoming more like Jesus. 
That's ultimately what he's after. Because friends, we are a spiritual being living in a natural world. And one day, all of this is going to go away. It's not going to be here. So all those superficial things that we're worrying ourselves with and fretting over, one day they are going to all be gone. And I bet you could speak to someone in Houston today and someone in Key West today and someone in Miami today who has lost things from destruction. And they would tell you all of this can pass away in the blink of an eye. But what happens in here, inside of us, the changes in our spirit, man, making us in the likeness of Jesus Christ, those things will never pass away. So we look at Romans 8, 28, and now we look at the end of Joseph's story. And this is what Joseph says to his brothers at the very end of his story. He says, as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are to this day. So this is what I want us to know as we start this journey in Joseph's life and as we consider and ponder the places that we are in our own story. The enemy may have meant evil for things that are going on in your life now. Remember, he's a thief. He comes to steal. He comes to kill. And he comes to destroy. Jesus doesn't come to do those things. He comes to give you life and life abundantly. So if you're in a season right now where things are being stolen from you or trying to be killed or trying to be destroyed, you can rest assured that is the enemy of your soul trying to wreak havoc on your story. But you can know this, what the enemy means for evil God means for good. And ultimately, that it would make us more like Him. God has a desire for you that is much bigger than even your own story. But the story for your children and your children's children and your neighbors and your neighborhood and your city and your state and your nation in this world. Oh, yeah. The devil may try to tell you he has the last word, but no, my friend, 2 Corinthians says God love, God's love had the first word and God's love will have the last word. And we are going to see that over these next few weeks in the life of Joseph. And I cannot wait to share it.